Previously on Miss President. The thing about sustainable development goal, goals is the missing. And so how do we ensure that this conversation is not only in some quarters, but also at very uh, grassroots level and all the way. Five years ago, I gave birth to my first kid. And you know why? Because of the effects that FGM had on my body. I think as leaders, they need to also know like every issue that we tackle, how do we leave no one behind? Who are the people who are involved? I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> how can one go to bed with no satisfaction in their stomachs? Food security is a very important topic every leader should have answers to. And talking about satisfaction, and this has to do with our leaders, is Kenya ready for a female president? Are we satisfied with leadership as it is in present day Kenya? To get a suitable answer that satisfies our curiosity, let us kick off today's episode. In today's episode, the contestants will undergo training, will be given tasks, various challenges and problem solving activities. They will respond through presentations before judges Zippy, Jerry and Michael. As is the norm, eliminations are expected in every episode, but we leave this to the judges' discretion and what they come up with, we will never know until we all know. Over 700 applications were received from all over Kenya, and from these, 350 contestants were shortlisted. After a series of auditions, over 50 women were selected, and they will now battle it out at the Academy for the coveted title of Miss President. In the race to be elected Miss President, we have the following contestants. Dr. Mary Mwale, a food security and nutrition expert employed by the Government of the Republic of Kenya in the Ministry of Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives. Currently, she is the head of food security, dealing with matters related to national food and nutrition security, policy formulation, capacity building and implementation. She is the chairperson of the National Food Labeling Committee, which drives the agenda of making Kenyans more informed about the food choices they make for their nutritional health. Dr. Mwale is committed to creating a positive impact where she works and passionate about achieving national food and nutrition security for a healthy, productive and prosperous nation. I just went back to go through, uh, to make a recap of the training we underwent. Uh, during your, uh, this period, you are undergoing the induction to be the US president of this country. So uh, it was felt that it was important for a Miss president to understand what food and food security is and the implication on the national development and the productivity and well-being of the country. So uh, in, the pre in the training, we took you through the, the constitutional uh, provision for rights to food. Why are we talking about hunger? Why is hunger so important in our country? Or oh, globally, it is among the 17 SDGs. It's actually SDG number two. Why did the world focus on hunger? So we talked about that. And then we also talked about the origin of the right to food. That is after the World War II, why it was felt that it was important because of the level of hunger that was there during the World, uh, World War II. 
and then what we went the guidelines to implementation of the World War II and how countries are supposed to uh, implement the right to food. So basically in the introduction we took you through that and we saw that in Kenya it's already included in our constitution. Article 43, Article 53 and 23 provide for uh, addressing the right to food uh, in, the, in the country across board, whether it is for young or for everybody, including mothers and children. And now, let us have a look at the key highlights from the topic of this week's episode. Food security, hunger among school-going children. Estimates determine that 23 million children go to school without anything to eat in Kenya. Chronic undernutrition impacts one in four children, stunting their growth. Children who are hungry fall behind in classes because they have trouble learning and paying attention. The child may also fall behind in class as a result of missing classes to help their family put food on the table. Some children are unable to attend school regularly drop out of school, or fail to achieve good grades in school, even if they have IQ that is high due to hunger. Now, if you were the president of the Republic of Kenya, what intervention would you put in place to deal with hunger among school-going children so as to ensure all students realize their potential in terms of school performance? The contestants will be divided into groups as leadership does not work in a vacuum. Leaders are required to work with people from all walks of life, while working within these groups, the contestants will be tested on their ability to lead or work as a team. The contestants have been reshuffled, chosen the group president, and have now settled into their new groups. My name is Dr. Zipi Okot. I am a lecturer at KC University, a gender consultant, an award-winning filmmaker, and the founding director of the Lake International Pan-African Film Festival. I am looking for one who is informed, bold, visionary, and has a unique leadership predisposition. Hi, my name is Jerry Kirini. I am a policy advisor, researcher, and advocate for women's advancement. I will be looking for courage, determination, and excellence. I will be kind, but firm. As I feel at the academy, there is no room for mediocrity. My name is Michael Nyango. I am the founder and lead and the agenda setter for Kenya's largest and most trusted social media platform, WhatsApp, The Forgotten Bottom Millions. 4BM, a social enterprise currently reaching over half a million persons every week via WhatsApp and transforming the lives of thousands of Kenyans. I will be looking for audacious, bold and daring leaders. Um, working in a group is fun in the sense that you get different ideas, different perspectives. So there's that versatility and diversity element. But it can also be curtailing to a certain extent. So there always has to be a balance between the two. I believe the knowledge that I've gotten here will really help me in dissecting all these issues to make sure that my people back there in Marsabit County, they have a better understanding of all these issues. The right to food is the right to every human being so that they have a dignified living. Unakumbuka, a hungry man is an angry man. Imagine a hungry child being an angry child. Presenting group three with their strategy, food for education campaign. 
Hashtag Gishebora Shureni. Frida Karani from Embu County. Malnutrition is a severe imbalance in the nutrients that a child receives because there is a minimum requirement to what a child needs to develop mentally, physically, and even emotionally. And a nutrition is when these nutrients are in sufficient amounts. The statistics are startling. We have 3.4 million Kenyans facing acute food insecurity, which means there is no adequate food in their homes. Out of this, 1.8 million children suffer from chronic malnutrition, which means they cannot access the bare minimum of nutrients that they require. 850,000 children are out of school in arid and semi-arid lands and in former settlements because of food insecurity. We have a legal framework that secures the lives of children and even their right to food. Indeed, we have seen the magnitude and of course we must get a solution. I need to tell you at the earliest opportunity that when it comes to food security, we are all involved. We need the parents, we need the teachers, we need the county government, everybody is on board. And that's why we are saying Suluhisho Shujia Mashinani. It has to get at the household. One of it is database. Indeed, we must be sure who are these vulnerable children. We cannot just be reactive. When you take food to everyone, including one who is able to afford. So for us, we are saying, when I become a president, data is key to get the vulnerable children. We are also saying Kenyans are used to Kenya Red Cross coming into support. Yet, maybe next door you are throwing food. What about if we have food Fridays, where on a particular day in the school day, we have people bringing food so that this particular child who is not able to be in school would be able to adapt and get some food. What about Chamba Shumeni? Remember the 4K clubs, some of us who, who read during those days. I couldn't recall a time that we could not get Skuma Wiki. CBC has come on board. We want this to be expedited so that the 4K clubs should be up and running because this will be sustainable. Congratulations to my team members. These are the presidents, Jean Esperance, Kisumu County, Lucy Mwendwa, Meru, Vera Kazungu, Kilifi Frida, Embu, Isiolo, Isfarem, Jama, Homa Belambisa, and finally, Pauline Onguko, Sea County. Thank you very much for giving us a hearing. Bless. Continuing with the statistics, we have 26% of children in Kenya under five years who are stunted, and we have 11% who are underweight. We also have 3.5 million Kenyans who are facing severe food insecurity uh, as per Kenya Food Security Outlook, and who uh, mostly are from the arid and the semi-arid lands. Now, about 755,000 children under five years are likely to suffer, suffer from malnutrition uh, and, and, and are in need of treatment. Now, um, Currently, there's something that is happening in the country. We do have a food program uh, that is funded 75% by the World Food Program, 15% by the Kenyan communities, 14% by the Kenyan government. Um, it has been running, however, it has been marred by a lot of challenges, including corruption, and we are going to continue hearing these as we continue with our presentation. Definitely, for a problem to be there or an intervention to be brought about, a challenge has to be there. So, what are the different challenges maybe that has led our government to make sure that at least we are going to have an intervention on maybe different issues that we have raised? Challenge like, for instance, climate change. This is one issue. As a country, we can't uh, rain away from it because, because of the change in uh, rainfall pattern, because of uh, drought and all these issues. That is why maybe by, by one way or another, we're facing all these challenges. And uh, another challenge like corruption, this is something that I, I don't even need to explain to any one of us. Because even the president of the country will always explain to you and say like 2 billion Kenyan shilling is being lost each and every day. Uh, lack of policy implementation. We have good policies which are being stated each and every day. Food policy, this and that policy. But what about the implementation bit? That is among us the challenges which has led our government to make sure that there is an intervention. And so, how are we going to intervene? What are our, are our sustainable uh, intervention that we've put across? We've set it uh, because this is an issue that if we come together, definitely we can solve it. From the government to non-state actors 
to the communities and the households there. So how are we going to solve it is the big Q. The big Q has been answered by myself. My name is Gumato Denge from Marsabit County. Welcome. We have the government, which is the national and the county government. How are we going to do all this? What is their role in this? Are they doing their role in a manner that it is needed? We can create a government dashboard to make sure that at least we monitor each and every time. We've started an intervention. How far have we gone? There is a loophole, for instance, like corruption. How are we going to seal all these loopholes? Is, uh, is, is a way that as a, as a national government or at a county government level, we can solve this. Food uh, quality control. Food are there sometimes, but what about the quality? Maize and beans are being taken by different, maybe, people who are given tenders to take to schools. At the end of that three-second count, somewhere on this planet, a child has died because of hunger. This translates to 10,000 deaths per day of children globally because of hunger. 73 million children, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable primary school age children, are in need of school meals. This translates to one and a half times of our Kenyan population. 370 million children missed school due to COVID-19 related school closures. This is almost six times of the Kenyan population. Coming to our region, the cost of stunted growth in Africa is estimated at $25 billion. This is close to, this translates to 2.9 billion children, Kenyan children. If you just add 400 billion to that figure, then you come to our national budget for the period 2022 to 2023. A third of child deaths in Africa are attributed to micronutrient deficiencies. As a country, we have over dependence on rain fed agriculture. Currently, with the differences in temperature, it has brought about very erratic weather patterns. Nowadays, it is very difficult to predict when rain starts and when it ends. But 80% of our communities are depending on rainfall to grow food. Some of the household challenges we face that are bringing about the issue of children not being in school, one is unemployment. People have to prioritize whether to make money for food or to take their children to school. Another thing is the high cost of living. Poor people do not have the luxury of choosing which diet suits them. They just go with whatever is available. And another last point is geographical location. The further you are from services, the more you are made to be more marginalized. You are not able to be reached out whenever there are opportunities. But also remember, these people cannot even connect to the internet, so they do not have the privilege of getting information on time. Lack of political goodwill is a major barrier for children accessing food. Presently, at the Senate, we proposed a bill for milk uh, distribution in school, but it never passed. So our children could not access food in schools. The national government provides uh, food for grade 1 to grade 8. We have the county government giving uh, food for the CBC uh, children. So we don't have and now when they don't provide that then equal distribution becomes an issue. So our children sometimes don't access enough food because of poor procurement due to corruption. We want to have a data system that will ensure that we track our project before, because if we don't measure it, we cannot improve it. Thank you very much. I really have faith that uh, I give my best to this mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and uh, I really know that the best is always appreciated in any given circumstance. I delivered, we really cooperated, we were tackling the issue of food security that is also dear to my heart because um, coming from a county that is um, arid and semi-arid, that is Isiolo, I understand the challenges that our community go through each and every day. Haijakuwa rahisi kuweza kuweka katika mizani uh, huu mchakato mzima wa uongozi na pia uh, yale maisha ambayo yako mbali na huu mchakato wa Miss President. 
For the assignment, the contestants will be judged on their understanding of the task, time management and presentation, creativity and innovation of the solutions provided, and lastly, leadership and group dynamics. Each contestant must write two names of who they think should leave the academy and the reason why they should go. The contestants will then also give two names of who should stay in the academy and why they should stay in the academy. Now, let us see what the judges and today's trainer have to say about today's presentations in the Reflections Room. What, what were your views when you were you know, listening on the assignments, any opinions, consultations that uh, you'd like to share with us? So uh, I've seen from the presentations they have been making, they really quite understood the subject and I saw some of them actually did quite some research, they were able to quote figures here and there. Mm -hmm. And they, they actually approach it in their own ways. Very innovative, in fact, they made, they made very good presentations. I think they are very good students. Mm -hmm. Judge Michael, were you impressed in the same manner? Oh, a lot has changed, mm -hmm. and definitely in terms of, I'm so happy that we're no longer seeing um, word being cut and pasted into PowerPoint, so that's a great thing. And um, also in terms of how they are owning the presentations, you can see the link between the presenter and between and the slides, which I think was very, very important because before, the weeks before, that was a whole disconnect. So that is great. Um, but as always, it's, it's really gotten hard and eliminating them is really going to be a challenge for us this week. Mm -hmm. Yes. First things, um, there were no more skits, mm -hmm. which I said, thank you. We wanted something different. Um, but also what I've realized is their quality of presentation has really improved. The graphics, it's all very neat. And you can see the coordination between the person who is speaking and the person who is pressing the, for the slides to go through. So they are well, they're better coordinated. But also I realized that they have actually come up with plausible solutions. They've really thought about what, you know, we've been hammering, think about solutions at your local level. Think about, you know, things that you're seeing. And I can see some solutions there. I'm saying, hmm, this is if, our government officials were listening to this, and I said, hmm, some interesting and innovative ideas. So I, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm quite pleased. I think the lessons have been learned. People are not just giving us problems, they're giving us solutions, and uh, the solutions are tangible. They are things that we can work on, uh, both short-term and long-term, and I think that's something very beautiful. I also liked that they did good research. The statistics were very good, except for one point, uh, one group said 3.4, another one group said 3.5 million people are hungry, and I was like, hmm, where is the point here? Yeah. But I mean, that is, uh, it depends on who did the research, and that's okay. Hello, ladies. Congratulations coming this far. This is episode 10. We are halfway through the journey to getting the ultimate Miss President. So congratulations. Uh, today we had a very lovely topic on nutrition, uh, on children, especially when you look at food security. And that topic was handled by none other than Dr. Mary Mwale. Uh, I'd like to give you a chance to give uh, the contestants your comments on their presentation. Okay, thank you. So, uh, I would like to give my observations on the presentations that were made. Uh, I was quite impressed uh, because uh, you all demonstrated the understanding of the topic uh, that you were given today. We were discussing food and nutrition security and why it's important to development. So you are all able, all the groups, they were able to articulate the, the recognition of food, uh, and, uh, food and food security as a human right. So that uh, all the groups were able to show that. You are also able to align it to the global agenda as it has been recognized under the global agenda, particularly aligning also to the SDGs. And then uh, some groups mentioned about the SDGs, the specific SDGs that are aligned to this. Then the constitutional provisions in the Kenya constitutional provisions in the cognition of the human rights to adequate food. And then uh, the policy commitments 
that are aligned to realization of the human rights uh, uh, to adequate food, you are able to do that. And also the implications based on the evidence of uh, hunger and malnutrition, you are also able to give us uh, the implications. And uh, the implications are also national development and personal development. So that went very well. And then uh, we also had the intervention strategies for corrective action, which also came out very well. Uh, a few, just maybe some of you may not have really given very convincing interventions and exactly how it will be done, but uh, generally uh, you did very well, uh, including the funding. So you made an attempt to look at the funding. We could see you demonstrated uh, very good research. You actually understood the topic and went further to do more research to give us uh, what we expected from you. And now I'd like to go to group one and I'd like to give the chance to uh, Judge Mary. So group one, um, I liked your presentation. Um, it was quite creative. At least I can see now we are putting all our names on the the group presentation so that at least we know now who we are listening to, which was good. So I, I also feel that you didn't take enough time or you didn't plan yourselves well enough to be able to come out with the, to explain some of the suggestions you had. And I would like you to expound a bit more. Um, you talked about a dashboard to measure, I don't know, results. Then I kept asking myself, what are the inputs into that dashboard? So it might sound fancy to say a dashboard and look like we are IT serving, which is not bad. But some of the solutions you're pointing out, they explain to us how they are going to work. The how, the how is what was missing. So take time to, you don't even need to list so many, many things. Eh? Just pick maybe three solutions which you see you can expand on to demonstrate what you've been doing and what you're thinking. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Judge Njeri. And now to Judge Michael. First of all, I think it's important that I speak about Group 2. Whenever you use local examples and use interesting stats or statistics that we do not know about, because Kenya, we are a large country, we're 47 counties, so when you say interesting things from your own personal um, situations, we remember them and we're able now to connect with you. So, for example, I'll be honest, I have never realized that Kuala was actually 80% semi-arid until she said that today. I've been to Kuala many times. In fact, it's one of my favorite destinations in this country. I had no idea about that. So such things make us now connect with you, make us think more about your situation and what's happening around. Then um, I also want to speak a little bit about um, on your presentation on food and nutrition. You must remember that before you, in the other weeks, there were other people who were in the academy don't lose the knowledge that they had presented. There's one of the presenters, one of, one of your colleagues who left the academy, who was very passionate about um, food exchange between counties. None of you mentioned that. So don't lose what has been said before. Bring it in and carry it forward. So for example, I'm also giving you a tip. Even those who may leave the academy today, if they had said things that are impactful and are useful, Pick up that knowledge and incorporate it. Build up on it. This is a leadership academy, as you've heard us say many, many times. And then also, when you spoke about food and nutrition, none of you made reference to our budget as a country. So, were well, these things going to work in a vacuum? So, note, I'm not saying you did anything wrong. I'm just saying that now, when you're getting more skilled, there's more things you need to learn as leaders and things you need to represent as leaders to make you stronger in terms of what comes out within your presentations. Then, for everybody, I want you to all remember this. How, how you begin is important, but guess what? How you end is also very important. So you must end very strongly too. So don't rush to the end so that you can beat time and so you can say, hey, guess what? We finished at nine minutes. No, we finished at nine minutes, but close it off properly. So always make sure going forward, you prepare your closing statement because that's what remains with us. So prepare your closing statement so carefully well because that is the last thing that we hear as you're exiting the stage. Finally, 
local solutions. Um, again, one of the contestants who left before spoke very passionately about food waste. I didn't hear anybody saying that the food that's wasted can be locally processed. There's a lot of sun, possibly drying fruits, possibly drying different kinds of vegetables, so that then the problem of nutrition that we were addressing, there's already local solutions which are around you, which you can embrace and we can take forward. So good job. Thank you for the work that you've done. But remember this, as we'll move on to the weeks to come, it'll be each and every person individually. But so when you get to that stage, you now need to find things that will define you and separate you from your fellow competitors. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, uh, Judge Michael. Uh, now to group three. Group three, your, your campaign was Food for Education campaign. That was a beautiful presentation. You have got very good, clear statistics. However, since all the three groups had very differing statistics on how many people in Kenya are uh, going through hunger, how many children are malnutrition, it is important that you tell us the source of your statistics. And if it is a government-related statistics, kindly ensure you get it from a government website source. So that let it not be any research group doing it, then the government statistics are also different. Yeah. Uh, I liked uh, that you mentioned uh, sustainable development goals in relation to the issue of hunger uh, when it comes to school-going children because that means at least you're transferring the knowledge that you acquired in the previous episode here. And also the fact that you said everyone is involved in food security solutions. That is very important. However, I was wondering how you come about 20 years later to tell us Nyai or milk is a solution. Nyai or milk? Couldn't you get another name? But anyway, the thing is, I think it is 20 years since our second president left, and that was his initiative. It will be important to acknowledge what's being done with the latest presidents who've come into power, the last two, and be able to see what is it that they are having, why is it that they, they did not adopt that name, and what is it that they are having that's more sustainable. Because we need to find a sustainable way into food security. So what exactly is it? If you are talking about your milk and three months ago we did not have milk in the whole country, hmm, can you give us a solution that you know is very sustainable to the children right now? I think um, I'll leave it uh, at that for now for group three so that we can move to the next stage. Hello, ladies. Hi, once more. I don't want people to greet me with such a voice. When we have sat together as judges, and thought so hard about who is going to remain so that we get the what? The leading person, the ultimate Miss President. So it is a good thing that we're doing. So hi, ladies. Hi. Yes, you never know if you're the one who's going to be the ultimate Miss President. So be happy that we are doing this elimination. So ladies, we will start with group one. Kindly come forward. Hello ladies, it's good to see you up here again because that means we're getting closer to getting our top lady. Uh, on that note, I'd like to request the following to step forward. Lydia Monica. Gumato Dengue. Ladies, in the previous episode, both of you had a comment from the judges. Lydia Monica, it comes out still a bit indecisive and still a bit of favoritism. And sometimes the favoritism may come in the tone of your voice, like this one you speak to more pleasantly and this one you speak to pleasantly. I'm trying to use very positive words in both. Yeah, like it is not big rude, it's about 
the level of pleasantness that you're using in, uh, when addressing different members of the group. Gumato Denge. You are also exhibiting favoritism. However, it comes out that you are outright selective and dismissive of other people's comments within the group. And for that reason, we will let you go. Because in the team, it is important that you embrace everyone's ideas. Even when you are not in agreement, it is about negotiating your ideas with other members of the team. So you don't need to dismiss others. You need to bring out your point to the table. And if the table feels that your point is better, that's it. So I think that is something that we will work on, uh, even outside the academy. Uh, but we are happy we have had you in the academy. Up to the 10th episode, it means you're doing a beautiful work. And uh, we'd like to continue hearing your voice on the airwaves. <laughs> And you continue to carry the title of Miss President out there. In every manner of way, we are proud of you. The rest, you can sit down. Hi, everyone. Okay. Everything has an end, and uh, I really appreciate your presence here. And uh, thank you so much for the connection that I've made. Thank you so much for the critics and criticism that I've gotten. I really appreciate you all and uh, keep on fighting because it will never end here. Thank you so much. Okay. Next, I'd like to call group two. Good too. Hello, ladies. Yeah, today is a very tough day, and this group is a very tough group to select to. <laughs> but work has to be done. On that note, I'd like to invite the two to step forward. Anna Belindoki. Nuru Mohammed. Nuru, it is clear you took too long during the presentation for reasons best known to you. And that really affected the performance of your group because it made the end of the presentations to be rushed. And we could feel that the other people are trying to rush through because they're not so sure how long, uh, how long, how much time they have. So that really affects the group. Considering that the team rehearsed, we wonder what really happened. Annabelle, in the previous episode, we talked to you about warming up and being more sociable it is important for you to take this very importantly because as a leader especially a leader in this era people deal with open door policies if you are not very relatable and sociable then it will be very hard for people to come and share the problems with you and that has a triple effect in your whole leadership because when people don't share their problems with you directly or indirectly then the policies that you're going to make there will not be in touch with the problems that we have on the ground. As much as we feel that we need to let one of you go home, we'd like to give both of you a chance. But it's not every day that that will happen. So we hope the two of you will work on those corrections. And in the next episode, let us feel a different Nuru and a different Annabelle. You can go have a seat. Group three, kindly come forward. It's another beautiful day, and we continue with our search. On that note, I'd like the two ladies I call to step forward, Valerie Lambisa, Vera Kazungu. Valerie Lambisa, you have survived, and I'm using the word survived, in the Academy to the 10th episode. However, we still don't feel you 
You know, we always say, be known for something. What do we know you for? That is still not coming out very strongly. As a leader, people need to remember you for something, and that is what makes them be able to relate to you. On that note, we will let you go home. Mvera Kazungu. At this stage of the competition, we love you, Kiswahili. However, at this level of the competition, you cannot allow your energy to go down because it's getting tighter, it's getting stiffer, it's getting more competitive, and any little thing will make you go home. On that note, we will also allow you to go home. However, we want to say thank you for making people like me love people. Really. Uh, thank you for sharing the knowledge that you had with us in the academy. Same to Valerie. So the ladies, you can go and sit down. Do you have something to say? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much, um, media focus, dream catchers, the judges, my fellow contestants. I'm so grateful that I met you people. My village watching me from home. I'm coming home. Be nice to me. <laughs> I hope I've made you proud. Changomero zimekuwepo nyingi. Sio rahisi kujaribu kuweka kila kitu katika mizani na kujitahidi kila siku kunapokucha. Lakini nataka kushukuru Mungu kwa mbali huu ambao nimefika kwa sababu haijakuwa rahisi. Tutaonana tena siku nyingine Mungu awabariki. Asante. Thank you very much Mvera Kazungu and Valerie Lambisa. And ladies and gentlemen, we continue with our search for the Miss President. Thank you. As today's battle comes to an end, here is a quick reminder of who has left the academy and who is still in the competition. wa maswali ya wasichana na kina mama ombi langu tu kubwa kwa wale waliobaki wajisatiti na hata atakayechukua hili taji ahakikishe kwamba mwanamke na msichana wa Kenya zile changamoto ambazo wanazipitia akaweze kuzipatia kipaumbele ili zikaweze kutatuliwa to my brothers to my siblings I am coming home. I missed you so much. To my daughter, Von Kendra, I want to dedicate all this to her so that in future, when she grows up, she be the president of Kenya. At some point, I'm a bit disappointed with myself that uh, maybe I've not made it to top 10. But all in all, I've gotten the information and the knowledge that I needed. Still, I'll go out there put into practice what I've learned, so life has to move on. You can imagine the bond we've created over time. It hits hard, but this is the quest to get Miss President. When I speak, I pause a lot because I try to make it as relatable and try to like give people some time to absorb, you know? Sasa, ah, bana. I really appreciate the judges. Let me tell you why. That's why I was sitting there and I was almost smiling because by the time I had done my presentation, I knew I had screwed up on the timing. Every week is a learning opportunity for me. Oh my, oh my, did you see those presentations? <laughs> As this group of women continues on the long and grueling journey that will demand their very best, we can only cheer and urge them to put their best foot forward. I challenge you now. 
with this quote from Dr. Ingrid Matson, professor at Huron University College. Part of leadership is knowing when to go ahead with a decision that's within your authority because you're really convinced it's the right thing even if other people don't understand it at that point. Thoughts? Opinions? Tweet us on at media underscore focus. Find us on Facebook at MFA Media Focus on Africa and check us out on Instagram at Media Focus on Africa. This show will be uploaded to YouTube. To view this episode and other episodes, including the full training session, kindly click on the link provided to access the Miss President's YouTube channel. And remember to click, like, and subscribe to the only show where you never really know until you know.